Hello, my name is Ruben. I said no, duh. And today we're going to be talking about, again, Noda Metal Gear Online. Now it's been out for a little while, I've played a good ass amount of it. I just wanted to give my thoughts on it so far. Whether I like it, whether I don't. Although if you've seen the remote play video I did for Metal Gear Online, you know that overall I do like it. But let's go into specifics on what I think about it all. Let me just turn down the volume thing in this. I'm recording this in Share Factory. I'm gonna have to edit the clip volume because fuck that's loud in my ear. But back to the topic at hand. Now, there is no drown line perfect now, but never expected it to be. But let's get the stuff we don't like out of the way. The negatives, obviously. First negative being game modes. There are at least currently only three available in Metal Gear Online. Bounty Hunter, Com Control, and Cloak and Dagger. Bounty Hunter is the mode that you'll see me play most of. It is essentially team deathmatch, however you have the option to regain. By the way, when I say team deathmatch, I'm it's had a little bit of a battlefield spin on it, where instead of counting up to a kill count, you're counting down tickets. However, if you hold in an enemy, just like you would in the single player of Metal Gear Solid 5, you not only take away it takes from the enemy, but you return one to your team. This Mounty Hunter mode is my personal favorite, as it is simply the most entertaining out of the three. The other two modes are another negative in and of themselves. They are just not as fun. Calm control is a sort of one-sided domination. Each turn, there are two rounds. Each round, one team has to defend three objectives for a set time limit, while the other team has to capture them to fill up a bar, which is supposed to be a download that they need to capture the objectives to be able to progress. This mode is just kind of boring. Regardless of whatever team you're on, it's just not fun. Is it terrible? No, but it's just... It feels like it's missing a certain something, a certain flair to keep you entertained with it. Now, Cloak and Dagger is... Definitely the more, most interesting and unique of the three modes. But it does not flow as well. Mel er, with Bounty Hunter, it goes pretty quickly from beginning to the fun of the combat. Even if you're sneaking around, there's not extensive periods of time where you're not seeing anything, you're not doing anything. Cloak and Dagger, either A, you're sneaking around cloaked and being forced to use non-lethal weapons, or you're a defender trying to find invisible enemies. Meanwhile, you're defending two data disks and they sort of capture the flag style mode where the attackers have to grab one and bring it back to base. It's an interesting mode, but because you're either slowly trying to stealth around, not being able to use really the weapons you want, or you're waiting there trying to find someone that you inherently are practically unable to see, it just doesn't flow as well. Now, but while it does have, the game does have one really good and well-made mode, another downside is getting into the matches. There's an auto match and a sort of I don't want to say server browser, but a match browser, rather. Problem is, well, at times you can get into a match really easily and quickly. At other times, you will be sitting there for what feels like forever. It simply takes, sometimes it, well, it takes too long. 
Not recently, I've been having a lot of luck. Maybe that issue has been fixed. But I remember back when I first attempted to play it, my first attempt at getting into a match lasted about 20 to 25 minutes. Or at least that's what it felt like. On the other side, though, when you are waiting for a match, you do have this free play area to test your weapons out and explore that is actually part of the... It's actually one of the multiplayer areas, which first our matches get split up into different parts. As I saw on that screen just now, the entire area is the free play area, but the match is only taking part in the top air section of it. So you can get to learn some, a few of the multiplayer or I'll say areas. The last downside I have with Mill Online is the weapons. Either they did not put very many weapons at all into this, or you it takes an incredibly long amount of time to unlock them. Because I have only unlocked a handful, and unfortunately, unlike games like Battlefield and Call of Duty, where you can see how many weapons there are to begin with, you have no clue what weapons are coming, when they're coming, or even what weapons are there, period. Which kind of removes parts of what keeps at least me personally going in some multiplayer games. The carrot on a stick of, that looks like something I want to use, I need to keep playing so I can unlock it and use it. But, if I can't use it, or rather I can't see it, how am I going to know if I want to use it? There's no carrot, there's nothing for me to chase. Of course, that is a minor issue, but it still is a slight annoyance. That being said, these negatives aren't really too bad, especially when compared to the positives. The base gameplay of Metal Gear Solid Online, or Metal Gear Online rather, is essentially the same as Metal Gear Solid 5, which is good because Metal Gear Solid 5 has good gameplay. It is very... is... Well, not very tactical based, but you can play it very tactically. If you so choose, or you can play a running gun. You have um, what feels like a lot more of an option with how you play it. Especially in the Bounty Hunter mode, you can stealth around, knock someone out using CQC, pull them, help your team out by taking on the enemy, and regaining tickets. Or, if you want to be Rambo, run and gun, kill as many enemies as possible, you can help your team out that way. You can save teammates who are being Fultoned, or you can, or if they've just been knocked out, you can run up to them, kick them, get them back up. The base gameplay of it feels like you have a lot more freedom of choice with how you want to go about it. Unlike games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, where, let's be honest, you really have maybe all one choice, run and gun. Although Battlefield, you do have a slight second choice of trying to snipe. But for the most part, you only have the one choice. Now, personally, I'm more of a running gun type. So I do tend to run and gun a little more. But that's what works best for me. And the thing is, I'm not punished for it. And that's what's good. You need, at no point are you actually punished for playing some way that other people wouldn't. That's very good, because you have that freedom, yeah, and it makes it a lot more fun. Now, for time you play, you're asked to choose a class, you cannot choose, you cannot change classes, but you do get the ability to unlock two more character slots, which means you have a total of three characters, which seems there is a total of three classes, matches perfectly, you have one for each class. The classes do... They don't really feature different things, but so far I have noticed they do level up differently. In terms of what they unlock. And I'm going to assume some of the weapon unlocks are different. 
because I have yet to unlock the UN, I forget what the rest of that gun's name is, it's the FAL looking gun, on any class other than the Infiltrator, I believe it was. And I do not have a machine gun for my sniper, but I have one for my enforcer. In fact, I have two for my enforcer. So, I will admit, though, because you aren't really locked in and screwed if you don't choose one class or the other, because you have the ability to choose all three, it does pretty much balance out the fact that you're asked to choose one class to begin with. In fact, it makes it null and void. And it lets you, because you can customize and name each of the characters, lets you separate them out and make it pretty much how you want. If you know that this is going to be my sniper character, and you want to make someone that looks cooler to be a sniper, you can, if that makes much sense. Personally, I made jokes with the names I made Jack Dylan and <laughs> made a ginger named Paco. Why Paco? Because I fucking felt like naming my goddamn ginger Paco. Now, the buddy system adds... doesn't add much, but does add a little. You can spawn on your buddy should they be alive and you're dead, and the closer you are to them, it does charge up the wormhole item, which, when it's fully charged, you can place it down, and you can teleport to your buddy. Literally, the wormhole is powered by friendship. Do not tell the My Little Pony fans. They will be happy, and we do not want that. Now, the maps of the game are definitely another strong point. While there are not a whole ton of maps to play on, each one of them is feels good, feels fun, feels interesting. Including maps taken from Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Not taken to not 100% copied, because there are some differences. But overall, the maps that are taken from Metal Gear Solid 5 are still fun to play on. In fact, they're actually some of my favorites. Now... There's also the inclusion of the walker gears. They're, they essentially are sitting around, just like vehicles in Battlefield. At first, I thought those things were a little overpowered as all fuck, and they are still very strong, but once you learn that you can freaking pretty much kill the walker gear itself, not the person in it immediately, but the walker gear itself by shooting it, you understand that they aren't all that scary, and especially when you realize they can't look directly up, in fact, they have a very limited range of how far they can look up. So. While the walking gears do seem a little OP at first, the more you play, the more you realize they're a good bit balanced. Excuse me. Now, as you're playing, you're also unlocking, you're also accumulating something called gear points, which essentially just lets you unlock customization options, clothing, headgear, colors on your weapons, which is a nice touch. Overall, though, while it does have its flaws, I would say Mill Gear Online is definitely very fun. In fact, it's become sort of my new addiction. Recently, if you were to see me playing, there is a, at least a 50-50, if not higher, chance that I'm playing Metal Gear Online. Although, obviously, I've not played it yet today. I actually just got done recording the Battlefield Friday and saying that to upload. Mm. Maybe I'll play Metal Gear Online after this. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. All I do know is I love Metal Gear Online. It's great fun. Even for its flaws, it's great fun and it's... My god, I actually like it better than the Metal Gear Online that was present in Metal Gear Solid 4. I like it a lot better, actually.
Even though, just like Metal Gear Solid 4, there's... It's a freaking puppy plush, or a kitty plush. And I just learned the hard way that the commentary recordings on Sure Factory have a 15 minute time limit. I did not know that. Interesting. But regardless, I'm rambling now. Long story short, Metal Gear Solid, um, or Metal Gear Online is awesome. If you have Metal Gear Solid 5, play it. Ginger out.